Up in a moment on Art Rocks, ballet Baton Rouge style. All of the hours you put in, all the pain that your feet are feeling right now, and you just dance. And there's nothing like the experience of just letting go and dancing. Translating natural beauty with a semi-abstract sensibility, and how to transform a major city thoroughfare into an outdoor sculpture gallery. That's all about to happen on Art Rocks. Art Rocks is made possible by the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting and by viewers like you. Hello, I'm James Fox Smith, a small cog in the big machine that is Country Roads Magazine. Welcome to Art Rocks. Bring up the lights on the Baton Rouge Ballet Theatre. Over the course of six decades, this institution has taught generations of young women and men to arabesque and glide and worn out countless pairs of point shoes. Many BRBT alumni have reached the heights of the American dance establishment. Other former students find the experience continues to add grace and beauty to their everyday lives. We talked with students and a longtime instructor about the many ways this local institution continues making a difference. Once you go on stage, you forget everything that's happened in the past. You forget all of the hours you put in, all the pain that your feet are feeling right now, and you just dance. And there's nothing like the experience of just letting go and dancing on stage. You feel the lights, your friends are next to you dancing on stage, you feel the audience engaging with you as you're on stage, and there's no experience like it. I love how I can make people smile when I dance, I can make them have a better day. The best part about classical ballet is the feeling I get when I'm on stage with all the lights and the tutus and the sparkles. There's a joy on dancing on point because even though it really hurts sometimes, you really feel like powerful and somehow graceful at the same time, especially with your friends when you get to perform a piece and you can all smile together and you know that you're all feeling the same thing, but you're doing it together and making something really beautiful. The Baton Rouge Ballet Theater has been here since about 1957. It started with a wonderful lady, Alyssa Fuchs, and she was a great artist who had worked with George Balanchine and Jerome Robbins. We have a great team of teachers, ABT certified, American Ballet Theater certified teachers, and that has a real codified schedule of how you approach training. So yeah, we are able to bring children and young adults into the pre-professional level or get a college scholarship from dance. And sometimes dance is just part of their training. We're not inventing the wheel here. The teaching of ballet, it's been going on for several hundred years. It's studied every day all around the world techniques and pedagogy have developed that train beautiful dancers and as long as you are continuing to keep up with the study of the pedagogy and what dancers need for the training you will be successful with your dancers there is certainly such a thing as natural talent and we would say people like Misty Copeland have that natural talent but you do not have natural professional ballet dancers. They trained. Those with the most natural talent were able to complete the process, perhaps in a shorter amount of time. We usually say it takes 10 years to train a professional ballet dancer. You can have the perfect facility, the perfect body for dance. Everything is easy, but you might not have the drive or the love. Um, but you might not have the perfect facility, the perfect feet, the perfect extension, and you might want it 20 times more than that other girl. And the one who wants it more generally will succeed. You can find a way. You can find a style of dance that suits you, even if it's not ballet. These dancers are athletes. And very often there is exposure to forms of dance where they're moving fast and they're having fun. and that is different from 
the training that a ballet dancer needs. It is fun, but it's fun to move slowly and find those small muscles and to train like an athlete. And so we get young people who come and they say, I know those steps. Their head knows what they are, but their body hasn't trained to do them. So they haven't honed the placement, the turnout, the muscular strength. And so it bores them. I've been doing ballet since I was four years old. I started, you know, in the little kid class just doing plies and tendus, and I never really stopped. And eventually in middle school, I joined the junior company here with the Baton Rouge Ballet Theater. We typically have an hour and a half class and then rehearsal after that. I started dancing when I was two and a half. I started being serious about ballet, and I decided to switch studios to Baton Rouge Ballet Theater. I was 14 years old when I did that. I'm going to attend Fordham University in the fall. It's affiliated with the Alvin Ailey School. Um, I'm going to be focusing on ballet and modern with the Horton Technique and the Graham Technique. I'm very excited to go to New York. It's a little scary being away from home, but once you get out there, it's great. There's so many opportunities to go see performances, to meet people, so many connections, great dancers. Dancers beat themselves up a lot because they do nothing but hear how you need to do something better. They look at themselves in the mirror and they see what they need to fix. I think teaching dancers self-motivation and feeling that they're worthy and a good dancer even if they're not as good as the girl behind them, even if they're not as skinny as the girl in front of them. It's good to keep their psyche healthy and strong. I suffer from anxiety, so me overcoming anxiety and getting on stage or me comparing myself to other people or just coming to class is sometimes a struggle just because it's so competitive and it's so rigorous and the mental strain is unbelievable. I'm suffering from shin splints, which is when your muscle is tearing off your bone from so much intense trauma to the bones that we have. And we only have one body and we tried to take care of it for as long as it'll last. But it is most definitely a physical strain along with a mental strain. The joy definitely exceeds the pain. That's why I keep coming back and why I try to push through my injuries so I can keep coming back and dancing. I've been here for six years. I've been in five Nutcrackers. As soon as I graduate from high school, I'm going to start auditioning for second companies and training programs that companies have to offer. But I'm also going to start auditioning for college dance programs. They've definitely brought a different side out of me. In the past year, at one of my intensives, I went to a contemporary intensive with Dance Work Chicago. And I really found that in contemporary, it used my ballet training and background for something totally different that I really loved. It's just such a freedom in the way your body can move that I hadn't really experienced before with ballet and I was really happy that I was able to explore that and know that that might be something I want to pursue later. I would definitely like to pursue a career in the arts and I'm only a sophomore in high school so I'm still deciding exactly which path I would want to take, kind of exploring musical theater, seeing if I would want to do music or dance or what style of dance. When we think about our success stories, I think of a few people. I think of three dancers who went straight from here to the Juilliard School and graduated from Juilliard and have gone on to careers in dance. One of those danced with the Jose Limon Company for 10 years. Helen Daigle is a beautiful dancer who left school a year early just to train, but she immediately went into a professional company in New York. She danced with Fell Ballet New York and then Ballet Hispanico before finding a home in Louisville Ballet. I think of several who are in Europe having careers dancing and many others who are teaching in universities. The Baton Rouge Ballet Theater presents a full season. There are three performances in the season. Two of them are produced locally. One is Nutcracker and one is a spring performance. And both of these feature all of our local dancers as well as guest artists that we bring in. 
The third performance of the season is usually a guest company that we bring in, a professional company from New York, because we believe it is the Baton Rouge Ballet Theater's mission to expose the community to professional dance at the highest level that we can. As the director of a company, what brings me joy is seeing other people recognize that what we've done is a value and want to continue it. Looking for something to do this weekend? With festivals, exhibits and live performances in big towns and small, there's plenty to choose from. Here's a taste. To learn more about these and other events in Louisiana, keep your eyes peeled for a copy of Country Roads magazine. And while we're at it, LPB's Art Rocks website features an archive of previous episodes, so to see any episode again, just log on to lpb.org. Meet Nina Irwin, a painter and ceramicist of some renown based in Kansas City, Missouri. Nina admits to kind of stumbling into her calling when realising she had to simply finish college, she enrolled in fine art based on the fact that she was already wasting a lot of time in museums, but captivated by the rigour of courses in painting, drawing and sculpture, Irwin found her calling and her dreamlike depictions of the natural world have been captivating her viewers ever since. It was a snowy, cold Thursday night. We were expecting maybe 60 people, and we ended up with well over 120, maybe 140. It was tremendous. It was a beautiful show. It was an easy show for us. It had a tremendous flow. This sounds so corny, but the room was filled with love and admiration for Nina. Oh my gosh, it was a fun show. And part of that was because of so many people. And then a lot of people knew each other and it was like, ah, party. To have a successful opening it was kind of validating. It's like, well, I've always had some wonderful people supporting me, but not a lot. I turned 50 this last year, and I don't feel like, oh, I'm getting old, and I, I, what am I doing with my life? I couldn't feel more different. The Nina Irwin, striding toward her studio on the fifth floor of the Livestock Exchange Building, has seen some impressive successes in the last few years. Since at 46, she decided to go all in on her dream of making the kind of art that galleries like the Weinberger might choose to display. Surrounded by a sea of materials and her beloved art history books, she's almost got that master's degree. Nina comes here to work daily with a method that's largely her own. I use inks and watercolors and oil paint. This is the way I do it. I, don't, I hardly work with opaque colors. I am going to imprint a form at the bottom of this piece. Sometimes I'll even like sit on it. Sometimes I will go back in and take more paint and I'm just going to drip it onto my painting. I used a lot of black. Maybe add a little of that. I kind of like that. All along, whether it was graphic design work, retail displays, or even once a billboard, Nina's skills with color have consistently been her strong suit. It also happens to be what I enjoy most. When I put down color on a panel and I truly just take that time to enjoy 
the brilliance or the subtleties and the relationships between colors I find very, very interesting. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I'm just very interested in the way materials react with each other. The big no-no is using watercolors with oil paints. And I was like, well, I have to. I, I have to use watercolors. So what I do is I just varnish in between. I create this, I create a, a, a layer of netherland in between these two that are never supposed to, the twain shall not meet. Which brings us to layers, the other trademark of both her paintings and the ceramic work she's taken up too. Layers of ideas, layers of color. I think of layers in the earth. I even think of our whole humanity is just a layer. Let's look at what happened over here. I like the way I'm seeing through the different colors. I like the way some things have pooled. My themes that kind of surface beyond the beauty of the world and the wonder of our gorgeous earth would definitely be what, what are we searching for in life? What is important? My very first show was a, a lot of this combining our natural environment with something man-made. It's definitely a topic that I turn to again and again. This is like a portal somewhere else, but it's also a portal to yourself. To me, the inner search in life is the search, you know, figuring out what am I doing here? What is my purpose? But the inner search isn't all about brooding, more along the lines of childlike wonder. So no problem if you take off your shoes. I, I can tiptoe around my stuff. I can even sometimes I'll just full-fledged step on my stuff when I'm in my socks. I just kind of layer myself onto my work. My work is fun and I am having fun and I'm doing a lot of things in my studio, but I am very concentrated. Hours go by and I have no idea. In fact, I really have to keep an eye on the time. I have this um, like cush time in my life where I don't have to constantly be, you know, producing something very specific. Part of my whole process is just sitting there and thinking. I'm glad someone's not watching me and I'm not on the clock. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm not sure. I don't know what I'm doing, but I know that a lot of the time I spend doing that adds up to better work, more thoughtful work. And in the case of this most recent show, making substantially bigger work. While the themes and materials haven't changed much, 2016 did bring significantly larger pieces than ever before. I think it was a little scary, you know, which is good. It's good to push those boundaries. This was something she was trying out and seeing how it worked and what the reaction is. Now I'd like to see her stretch that horizon a bit. One horizon checked off this time, poetry. Haiku in particular. Nina teamed with Greg Hack from the Kansas City Star to merge verse and visuals. It was a first for both. It was just so much fun to do. His work is fantastic. He was able to really get into subjects in a really abstract way. You know, they, it all started crisscrossing and we weren't sure, you know, where it separated it. Very, very interesting. I love that part of the show. And we've gotten a lot of good feedback. People are very much enjoying the poetry works. Though technically this is a solo exhibition, the gallery is also showing a few works by Jim Leedy. In a way, it's a vote of confidence that the new kid can hold her own with one of Kansas City's best. This is her time. I mean, she's an emerging artist, and uh, she's thriving. She's not playing. She's very serious about what she does. She's a natural. I am so excited to share my work. I like being part of the history and I also feel connected. I feel like I honor artists of the past by continuing to work hard and carry on this tradition. That's really important to me. It's mostly fun. You just have to be resourceful. I've had to find ways to apply my fun <laughs> in order to get paid, and I, I have done that. So it's, 
it's it's great and it's and I do I do work hard but gosh it is it is oh my god it's almost always fun <laughs>
we're hoping that people do kind of circumnavigate the piece when they come out to look at it because it's, it's extremely different from every single vantage point. One of the most important things that we're bringing to the city through these sculptures is how does this make you think about the city you live in differently? A lot's going on in the downtown area and I'm hopeful that Sculpture Milwaukee can play an important role in attracting people to, to see that but also learn about all the other great things that are happening in the downtown Milwaukee area. And that is that for this edition of Art Rocks. But remember, art lover, you can always watch episodes of the show at lpb.org slash art rocks. And if that's not enough for you, Country Roads Magazine is a great resource for enriching your cultural life with art, cuisine, escapes and events all across the state. So until next week, I've been James Fox Smith and thank you for watching.